Well, today is the day we've all been waiting for. I got a new haircut. Also, the new spindle's going on the mill and we're gonna make our first chips. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, I think the day's finally arrived. It's time to put the new spindle on the mill and make some chips and hopefully it will go on and stay on and we won't be pulling it off again to use the old spindle to make new parts because I screwed something up. I've thought through the process. I think I've done everything I need to do with the old spindle and I think it's time to move forward. There's only one place to start. Off with its head. Okay, let's get a platform mounted here so we have something to rest the head on. I don't wanna have to reach out here and wrestle all the weight at arm's length. And that looks about right. And let's get in here and loosen the bolts. This is going to be in the way. If you turn it the correct direction, it comes out easier. Keep it from moving. Okay, that's the last fastener. Except there is a screw down in this hole here we have to pull. this back in just so it doesn't get lost. And let's... Uh, one of the questions that I get a lot is, is the new spindle heavier or lighter? And people seem to assume that the new spindle is gonna be heavier than the old one. Uh, I can tell you after lifting the old one off, that is not the case, but let's go over to the bench and weigh them and find out. Okay, I've just got a gnarly old bathroom scale here that you can barely read. Yeah, I guess bathrooms aren't intended to be as lightly lit, or at least they weren't when this thing was made, as what I've got here in the shop. So I'll turn it on here. It's reading zero. Let's put the old head on it and see what we get. Okay, I'm reading 58 pounds. Can you see that? Yes, I think you can. 58 pounds for the old one. I was guessing 60, so that's not too bad. Okay, and the new spindle with the new mount 26. So it is less than half the weight of the old head. And there's just so much cast iron in there and a great big DC motor. It's not that surprising to me that there's that much weight difference. But if you've seen my you know, back catalog videos, you know that I have struggled over the years 
with the uh, maximum speed on my z-axis and i'm pretty sure that taking more than half of the weight off of the head is going to make a difference for that but we'll see let's go put this thing on the mill okay well, this is the part that i've been looking forward to and dreading for a while because this is where we find out if everything's going to fit see how much lower i can bring this See if I can get it low enough to actually fit this on. And it looks like not quite. Let me grab a block then. <laughs> okay, it fits. All the holes line up. That's good. And if this bolt goes in the middle, which it does, then we should be golden. Okay, that's a pretty tight fit actually. So it's very much, yeah, it's very much what I was looking for. That's harder than it looks. Fortunately, I have a tool for that. Oh, did not expect this to be the hardest part, but here we are. Okay. Okay, let's grab the tramming bars. There's one. Make sure the screws are the set screws are backed off. Let's run this down, see if we can actually move the head with them. Oh yeah. That is beautiful. Nice. Okay, let me get a dial indicator and let's finish tramming this thing in and getting it into position. 
Now I don't actually have a proper indicator holder for this setup, but I think even though this was designed for an R8 spindle, I think I can probably clamp it around this tool holder. Yeah, it's going to be all right. Okay. Yeah, that's right on zero. It's very close. Let's see if I can dial this a half a thou. Oh yeah. Okay, the tramming bars are good. Okay, right dead on. And I'm going to take the indicator off so that I won't try to finesse it anymore. Okay, we've got the spindle all mounted. And by the way, um, I don't know if, how well you can see this, but um, I went ahead and turned the tr took one of the screws out of the tramming bar and turned it vertically so that it no longer engages this back plate. I got some comments on one of the previous videos saying that if I installed these tramming bars, I was actually going to be removing one of the safety features of the mill, which is that this head can actually rotate in a crash and that becomes the weak link and can release some of the pressure so that I don't damage the spindle bearings. And that actually is not dumb. So I went ahead and did that. I don't need them, I'm not tramming right now. So I went ahead and took one screw out, rotated it, tightened it, tightened it back down in a vertical position so that it won't engage that back plate. And in a crash, the spindle actually can move. So I need now to hook up the electronics and I'm maybe at some point gonna make a drag chain or something, but for now I'm just gonna use the heavy spindle cable as sort of the, um, the flex joint here that'll carry the pneumatics. So I need to get set up and get that in position with it fully extended. So I'm gonna take the spindle all the way to the bottom. And I already checked this and it almost reaches the table and I've got that tool that's in there lined up with the mill table slot anyway. So that's as far down as I can take it. The mill can actually reach a couple more inches with, um, if I take out this, uh, this dust cover, the way cover, but as this is with kind of a normal length tool in a normal length tool holder, I'm actually below the top of the table in the slot. So I can mill all the way to the table as it is. So that's all the reach that I need. When I designed this mount, I designed it so that the spindle nose would be in the same place as the spindle nose on the original head. So we should be good. So let me get the cable looped over here and see what we can do to get it into position. There it is. Now I want a nice smooth transition over the top. I think that's gonna be about right. Let me get a zip tie on that just so it'll stay in place. And then we'll test the motion. Turn this so you can see it. Okay, I can live with that. Okay, let's grab some pneumatic line here and I will just throw one piece over the top and go in the back and hook it up and then make sure we're in a good position for length. I got my tubing cutter here. I'll just clip that off. This is the ATC port. And we'll hook that up.
I'm gonna get some zip ties on here just to make life easier. Well, this is a shot you rarely get to see. This is all the plumbing and wiring here on the back of my CNC mill. Uh, I've got the box mounted down here on these rubber shock absorbers. So the vibration of the mill, the cutting, the spindle will not uh, all transfer into the box. At least I try to decouple it as best I can. And this, these are just um, industrial vibration dampers that I picked up off of eBay. And there's you know a quarter inch bolt that goes through each end with nuts and washers on them. So this is the electronics enclosure, the wiring for the pneumatics, the cable that goes over to the CNC machine, and the cable for the VFD control, the remote control, that still needs to be routed to a proper location. Got compressed air line coming in here to a manifold. This is actually just an aluminum uh, air manifold that I made uh, many years ago. I've got a, an air pressure regulator for the blowgun that I have on the front. I've got an extra port here that I'm not using right now. I was using that for the air wrench I was using on my drawbar. And then over here I have the feed for all of the spindle pneumatics. So that comes down to a two-stage filter. And I don't have the, I don't know off the top of my head the, the micron levels of these filters, but these the first one's coarse and the second one is really fine and they're both water traps. Then there is a uh, pressure regulator, and I've got this set at 90 PSI, which is where I have my shop air regulated anyway. Then that feeds up into the valve assembly that we looked at last time. And the coolant, I currently just have plumbed to the line that goes up to the Noga Mini Cool that I've been using. This will eventually feed the fog buster. And then I've got the purge air and the automatic tool changer, and those feed the two lines that you saw me throw over the back of the mill today. And those just get zip tied to the spindle cable and just go right up over the top. And I think that's about it back here. It's all really simple. The rest of this wiring is the pre-existing motor and limit switch wiring that isn't super pretty. When it was the only thing back here, it just hung nice and gracefully on the back. Now there's quite a lot of wire back here and I might reroute it. We'll see. Let's try the contactor or the tool changer. So let's power that on just so I've got power to it, and then this should release the tool. And look at that. So much better than what I was doing on the other machine. Cannot complain about that. Okay, let me go find a tool and uh, let's make some test cuts. Okay, this is the uh, wonderful and terrifying part. We're gonna make some test cuts. I've got a tool loaded up here in a tool holder. This is a quarter inch three flute uh, end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. This is coated and this is their variable flute uh, end mill. Um, I'll put the part number uh, in the video description if you're interested. Um, this is what we're gonna start with and we're gonna run this flat out at the full 12,000 RPM. Use the tool changer here. That is wonderful. That is so much nicer than what I was doing previously with the, with the draw bar. I love that. And now let me spin it up, make sure we're actually getting air in the out coming out the spindle nose. Yep. I can hear that running. Now, coolant, ideally I would have uh, the fog buster set up. I don't have that ready yet. And ideally I would stick this up here on the side. But of course, I don't have that yet because this is aluminum. So the only place I can really stick it is to the spindle nose here, which is steel. So I'll stick that on. Let's see what we can do here for coolant. Probably better off overdoing it than underdoing it. Let's see what we've got. Now, I'm not an idiot, so I'm gonna do these initial cuts by hand. I'm just gonna turn the spindle on, and I'm just gonna jog down, I'm gonna find this. Um, I've got set up so that my normal cutting speed now, if I just hit the cursor key or use my jog wheel, is gonna move at 36 inches per minute. This is a three-flute end mill running at 12,000 RPM, 
So 36 inches a minute will be one thou per tooth. Now this should be able to take a quarter diameter cut. If it's anything like the, the ones I've been using, I'll probably, instead of taking the full 625, I'll probably only take 10 thou initially and we'll just get a feel for how it's cutting, see what's happening, and then progressively go deeper and deeper as I get more confident that the thing is actually working. And then if it's working real well, maybe we'll try some deeper cuts or maybe we'll just call that good for today and I'll go do more research and get ready to do something more aggressive. But let's give it a shot. Okay, so there's a quarter inch depth of cut. I'm gonna zero Y and let's go in. Let's take a 10 thou cut just to start with. Okay, and then we'll make a pass across at 12,000 RPM and 36 inches a minute and just see how it feels. And that was like nothing. Okay. Let's take uh, 30 thou. Okay, there's 30 thousandths. And that is again like nothing. Okay. Let's go in the whole 62 and a half. Okay. 62 thou at 36 inches a minute. Okay, so we're gonna run that again. I'm just gonna watch the current on the uh, spindle, uh, on the VFD, just to see how that looked. And then we'll try faster. I'm not gonna go any deeper because I don't wanna fill up the gullets on the end mill. And I don't have specific tool information for this end mill, but I'm going to just use this uh, base, do what I have based on the, um, the YG1 end mills that I typically use. So we'll do this again. I'm just gonna watch the current because you could hear the spindle loading up, but it seemed to be fine. It's a beautiful cut and it, the spindle hit two amps. I mean, that is totally fine, totally within its capabilities. So let's go ahead and take it up and let's go a little faster. Let's take a thou and a half per tooth. See what that looks like. Wow, this is terrifying. Okay, this is gonna be two thou per tooth at 12,000 RPM. It's gonna be cutting at a little over 70 inches per minute. And this is probably the last test we'll do today. Now, I'm expecting it to bog down when it hits the cup, cut and then power up. This is sort of an unusual situation. If I was doing high speed machining, I would be entering the cut gradually, but since I'm just doing this manually and it's gonna plow along with no load and suddenly hit the end of the part, you're gonna hear the spindle drop a little but uh, it should power through it and we will see how this goes. Okay, I'm impressed. This is the same load, or it's the same depth of cut and the same width of cut that I've been running on this machine at a maximum cutting rate because of my slow spindle, I've been going at a maximum cutting rate of nine inches per minute. And we just ran that at 72 inches per minute and it didn't even complain. It was just beautiful. Right now I have the rapids on this machine set at 150. I have no doubt that um, I could cut you know, at a uh, hundred with no trouble, but 72 is two thou per tooth on a three flute end mill at uh, 12,000 RPM. So I am just tickled to death and the surface finish is beautiful. It's every bit as good as anything that I've gotten before previously with the other spindles. So I think this is going to be a winner and now I just need to go find something to actually make with it. 
I've got several projects in mind. I need to make a bracket to mount the uh, VFD controls up here. I've got, at some point, I gotta go back and finally do a proper encoder mount for the electronic lead screw on the lathe. But for now, I'm very pleased with this. This is taking very nice chips. They're, you know, two thou per tooth. And we're plowing through that 72 inches a minute. Uh, this is just gonna be a game changer for this machine. You know, instead of taking an hour to mill apart, it's gonna take minutes. So I am looking forward to that and those videos will be coming. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.